Hey everyone, here I am with another LEGO Harry Potter Re Summer 2024 review, and this one's on Buckbeak. Well, otherwise brick-built Buckbeak, of course. So, on the front of the box here, we have the LEGO Harry Potter logos, Wizarding World logo, and same border that we've been seeing since 2021, of course. And then, picture of Buckbeak, uh, with outside of Hagrid's hut and the pumpkin patch of it, and then... Recommended ages is 9 and up, set number uh, 76427, has 723 pieces. And then flip to the back side of the box, have Black Beak in another position, and a relaxed picture of him, and also measurement of his body and the wingspan, and Lego logo, set number again, and there. And now onto the manual, of which little CGI rendering and the logos again. Transition from plastic bags to paper bags. Add for, add for the builder app. Then on the back, how to win on the online survey. And then all the pieces that come with the set. And then advertisement of some of the uh, new and recent uh, Hogwarts uh, sets that there, that there are now and some of which that I previously reviewed and how to fold up his wings and the last building steps of him. Okay. First off is this little side build which is just a generic uh, rock slack or little rock slab that is probably a wall part of Hagrid's hut, but just uh, but just randomly there, or just a random wall bit to it, and also a couple of similar pumpkin builds. Yeah, first off, do have a couple of pumpkin-like builds which are just uh, snot bricks and with cheese slopes that are, and also a jumper and also a leaf piece and a. Uh, a spike piece on top of it for a stem. So, so get a whole build that is in orange and one that is all in sand green. And of course, it's supposed to be like a little bit of a Hagrid's uh, Hut's pumpkin patch, of course. And then side of which is just a couple of rounded corners on like corner plates and also these little leaf pieces and these little vine pieces and obviously representing extended stems of some pumpkins or vining on the wall and then the wall part which is just uh bricks and plates all stacked and also but with a couple of cylinders in it to add a little texture to it and then a few uh corner jagged slopes on top and also this little build for a uh a little crow up top here which can apply either on here or you can clip off and add on to this clip here if you wanted. And then from the back side of which quite plain and also can kind of see how that uh, texture goes on for it and all of this kind of takes up some or very few pieces of that although I think whole lot of this build probably wasn't much necessary so well even though in last year's Dobby set kind of had an extra build with the Tom Riddle's diary and uh, the cake floating cake of course all I think just back with nothing added in would have been as much fair but whatever so that was about it there and now on to Buckbeak himself, which, as you can see, kind of massive, quite large for how he is, and also almost a kind of similar style as some of these other billable characters that we've had in Harry Potter lines recently. Well, but also, while well, captures uh, the his appearance, of course, is almost as accurate as the Mandrake, also in this wave that I previously reviewed. So now, starting out with the leg. Yeah, mainly the front legs here, which are 
I like quite unique builds and of course using a mixel joint in there and also with these few little toe parts and also uh, the uh, cow horn pieces acting as uh, claw toe or toe claws of course and then also the back ones which which are just the just a few uh, corner rounded corner of bricks there and all just on a hanging bracket hill held on with another nickel ball joint and then the rest of the uh, lower legs here of which just with a couple of other brackets or I mean wedge plates and also a mixel joint and a regular uh, ball socket joint on there and also this little and also one of those technic bits used with a ball joint and it so you do get a good bit of range of movement in it and then as you see just a couple of car hood pieces acting as some of the upper flesh of his uh, upper legs of course and then also kind of uh, jagged slopes and curved slopes and a plate around it and also if I take the leg off and you can see it has one of the ratchet joint kind of limb kind of pieces well same well with both the front and the back legs to that but unfortunately with these kind of limbs can't move the legs in and outwards so although I think would have been better if they were like outwards and on ball socket joints to that but I think but these which almost fair enough for that and as for this uh, back area which is like the whole tail build which is comprised of a lot of like bricks and, and also a little bit of snot with the with these um, uh, wedge plates here and then these upper slope pieces and a other curved slope or jagged slope acting as a nice uh, furry texture to it and then as for the upper body part which just a whole lot of the uh, other curved slopes obviously to add a bit of texture to some of the flesh of his body of course and then also forgot to mention that for the front legs here is that can't like pose them like out in outwards because it's blocked by these slope pieces just have to pose them inwards like that well even though the possibility is it kind of works out for that and then this upper chest area which is quite nice texture of like these uh, pizza slice plate pieces and in both uh, white and sand blue and also these other uh, slope pieces acting as feather or give a texture of feathers like we saw on the uh, porg in the in the Star Wars ones it's well for a feathered look to it and then also same with the uh, other uh, slopes on here and also these uh, curved in slopes as well and then upwards is finally the head build which is mostly has a kind of a mix of cur uh, jagged slopes and curved slopes and also a little more little assemblages acting as like other feather parts and to the back side which is just a large exposed uh two by four brick on there so i think would have been better if a couple more uh or a few extra uh slopes were added in there or just spike pieces in there to, uh, acting as like a couple extra feathers on there well, even though these kind of concealed that, of course, although it's quite heavy with slopes around it, and this other jacket slope representing a beak to there, and also these eye pieces, it's also the same as the mini crow like build that we saw earlier. All of which built quite well to that, although I think wouldn't better if these were in yellow since in the films, since in the movies, and also the a uh, mini fix scale buck beaks do have uh, yellow eyes to that, so I think should be in yellow for that. But yeah. And then as for the wings here is <coughs> that you can like, since they're on two different ratcheted joints, can like 
play it outwards, turn it sides, and then fold right outwards like so. So get a little extra good posability to it. So as for these wings here, which are with the ridge bricks in them, obviously being like some of the ripples of in the flesh in his flesh of that, and then also do get oh, hang on. okay, and then also just some curved slopes acting as like the edge parts of the wings, and then also right up here are. Uh, some like hinge parts with these other uh, curved slopes to that and then obviously representing the feathers of it and then also these upper ones do have another one of those kind of pieces as and also a little longer as well and they're all on these uh, hinge piece to that to add a little extra movement to it uh, oh whoops and also to be aware of these uh, slopes on these uh, inverted slopes on here might kind of pop off with that. And then as for the posability, which kind of they do rotate around and also swivel up and down, and then also hinge at like a full 120 degree angles, and also in parts of which or inside inner part of it does have the. Uh, two Nexa Knights shield pieces like we see a lot now. And then also the head of which on a full uh, ball socket joint on here. And then all four legs to move in and outwards. And the knees, uh, or both knees, kind of go in and outwards. And then full ball joint on all four feet. And then the tail part, also full range of movement for that. So do get a good bit of posability out of him. And now to folding up the wings is quite simple as well. well. Simple as that. Oh, also the hang. So my overall verdict is, I think this is which a quite he which a quite cool set. Like, do get a unique uh, brick build creature that we barely get much. And of course, like we've seen from the last few waves of Harry Potter sets, which, but also, do, do get full good range of movement and also, and also, uh, some unique texturing to it. Well with some of the curved plates acting as the feathering, feathers and such, and also some unique uh, uses of pieces like the car hood pieces on all the limbs, and whereas for the $70 that he is, which uh, quite high for how it is, like, although I think getting, uh, without the extra side build of which, then he'd probably be around, uh, set, around, set, or around like 50, 60, which, almost as much fair for that but aside from that he which is a which quite good uh, price for peace and also a lot of good movement to him so well so he which kind of a little better example than like last year's Dobby and uh, yeah and also do he also provides plenty of good uh, color schemes of like Light gray, white, and sand blue, of course. And uh, although I think, and of course, could have had a little bit extra, few extra bits to to like make them a little bit more flawless, like extra feathers in the back of the head and so on. But otherwise, still quite great as is. But yeah. And so now, if you are looking to get this set for your a Harry Potter set collection, then definitely pick him up. And if you are looking to get this, to get him, then definitely pick him up. And that's about it with this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.